Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. Um, Luke 1, 26, to get Jesus' birth. Is that a good verse to determine when Jesus is born? We're going to look into this. It started out with a talk with the brother in Christ in the comment sections uh, under another video. And it started out something small, but as I looked into it more and more and more, it got to the point where... Got it. Exit out of this for a second, get to the information. Sit. Victoria's making lots of noise, my miniature schnauzer. But decided, hey, you know what? Let's do a study together on this, okay? Luke, if you want to turn to Luke 126, we're going to start there in our studies. And we're going to find out is Luke 26 really a strong argument to say that Jesus is born in December? Because okay, some people are saying Jesus is born in December, and they use Luke um, 126. So, let's turn to Luke 126. We're going to, basically, it's almost like an expository study starting at 26. We're going to go through it, pick up on some things, and we're going to talk about the Jewish calendar versus the Roman calendar. Okay. One thing I'll say just right off the bat, people will always try to use that against us who stand for the Word of God and we're against Christmas, that we use Roman calendars, but blah, 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 blah. We're going to talk about that here, okay? You can be oppressed and somebody else that God puts in charge says, hey, this is the calendar you have to go by. We have no choice in the matter, okay? We're not hypocrites, Somebody that God put in charge, he deems who rules the different countries, he's the one in charge. This country says, this is the calendar that, that we're going to go off of. Okay? It's not in our control. It's in God's. Okay? Now, when it comes to Christmas, is that in our control to say, I want nothing to do with this paganism? Oh, yeah. Okay. But what, jumping ahead a little bit. So, Luke 1, verse 26. This is my Bible. It has huge lettering, so it's like two or three pages sometimes for one chapter. Luke 1, 26. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel went, was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth. 27. To a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. Remember, espoused. They're not married yet. Sometime in the future, they're supposed to get married. He, she's just a spouse. She could have been a spouse to him for a long time, since the day she was born. There's, if, if that's a whole other study to look into where people are saying how espousing works and why and when it happens, you know. But the marriage doesn't happen until later. All right. So, it says the sixth month there. All right. The sixth month in the Jewish calendar, I'm hoping I'm getting this right because I looked it up. People can correct me that know it more, is Adar. Okay. And when you take that Adar, the Jewish calendar, the sixth month, and you try to put it on the Roman calendar, it comes out to be around February or March. Okay? So I'm with them so far. Okay? February and March. So people will say, they won't say February, they'll just jump it to March. It's supposed to be halfway between February to halfway between March. So those two months, last half, first half, that's the month of Adar. Okay? from the studies I've done, okay? Don't make it like it's absolute fact. I didn't go through and do like, I'm not a prof like years and years of study on the Jewish calendar. I'm just going off with some people have done studies. Um, so they just, they leave out in February and just go with March, the first two weeks of March, uh, which still doesn't work because it's December 25th. So ADAR is nowhere near December 25th. I mean, in the sense of, it's just the first two weeks of March. But they'll take the whole month of March and go from nine months from there and say, see, December, that's when Jesus was born. Okay? We haven't gotten to the part where um, Gabriel tells her that she's going to conceive. But this is, like I said, this is the sixth month is when she's told. And they say she conceived right then and there. Or just a couple, few days after she conceived. So that's our starting date. Okay? They try to say that she was conceived then and that December was the birthday. Okay, in order to further fine-tune their calculations, I'm just reading from some of the stuff that you also that they don't take into account. Right? In order to further fine-tune their calculations, the rabbis determined that the month of Nisan, Sivan, 
Ave, it's A-V, but I don't know how that's pronounced. Tashiri, I'm probably butchering all this, and Shivat are always 30 days long. Okay. Now you don't need to know, these are just days of their month, or the, the names of their months. Okay. Uh, Ishar, Tamuts, Elu, Tivet, and Adar are always 29 days long. Notice it says Tamuts in there, that was a little, like I said, so is this the actual Hebrew calendar that was like back then, or is that the Hebrew calendar they're using today that's been perverted? Uh, I don't know. But the whole point of this is, listen, there's 30 days and 29 days. Our Roman calendar, it's 30 and 31, except for February, but, you know, ours is like 30 and 31. Now, Hishaven or Kisiv, I can't pronounce it, those two months are either 29 or 30 days in length. In a leap year, there are two months of Adar. Let that settle in. There's two months of Adar in a leap year. When that occurs, Adar 1 is 30 days long and Adar 2 is 29 days long. What if this year, this period that they're talking about was a leap year? There's two months of Adar, not just one. A short Jewish year, therefore, consists of 353 to 355 days, which a leap year varies between 383 and 385 days. Okay, the names that were used for the Jewish months are actually Babylonian in origin. Okay, just want to throw that, learn that it was, it was neat information. You know, they're Babylonian origin from the, when they went and were slaves in Babylon. Okay. Were adopted by the Jews at the time of the Babylonian exile in the 6th century BCE. Now, I don't know how accurate that is, but I found it interesting because you see the word Tamuts is one of their months that they're using. Okay. Tamuts. Okay. But the whole point of this was is that some of their years were longer and then the next year was shorter. Okay. We don't know the exact day that Jesus was born, but people will take that. But I didn't have to go outside that. We're going to get back to the Bible. I only need the Bible to disprove that. But I, I, this is just information. When you get into something, you're like, well, you start doing a study. Then you're like, well, I want to look this up, and I want to look up that. What about this? What about that? Okay. So I had to look up the sixth month in the Jewish calendar. Now, another thing to consider that is, is that they were under Roman control. Uh, Matthew 28, I'm going to stay here on the Bible, if you want to turn to Matthew chapter 22, verse 16, sorry, 22, 16. Got to understand, they were under Roman control. Well, printer making noise. And they sent out unto him their disciples with the Herodians, saying, Master, we know that thou art true, and teachest the, teachest the way of God in truth, neither carest thou for any man. For thou regardest not the person of men. Tell us, therefore, what thinkest thou? Is it lawful to give tribute unto Caesar or not? But Jesus perceived their wickedness and said, Why tempt ye me, ye hypocrites? I'm stopped there for a second. It's kind of like these people that attack us for defending the Bible and saying Christmas is pagan, you know. You use a pagan Roman calendar with Roman gods on it. You're a hypocrite. Okay. Uh, no, we have no control over that. You do have control to say, I don't want anything to do with Christmas. I'm not celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ in the month of December, along with these paganism stuff. I'm going to do it in January, or February, or March, April, May, June, July, August, September, on and on. You hardly ever see the birth of Jesus Christ being taught any other month but, G but December. Okay, That right there should be a red flag. But let's get back to the topic here. Show me the tribute money. And they brought unto him a penny. And he said unto them, Those whose is the Im image and subscription? They say unto him, Caesar. Caesar was on the gold. Okay. Then said he unto them, Render therefore unto Caesar the things which are Caesar's, and unto God the things that are God's. Okay. We're being forced to use the Roman pagan calendar. Okay. But our life is based off this book. Okay. Christmas is not based off this book in any way, shape, or form. Okay. So that's, an, that's their way of saying, I want my flesh holiday, I want my paganism, I want my gifts, <laughs> I, want, I want me, me, I, I. It's not about Jesus Christ and His Word. So, but for the study here, um, they're under Roman control. Remember, this is Greek coming to English. So could that six-month mark be the Roman calendar. 
Okay. I just wanted to throw that in there. Honestly, um, I think it's the Jewish calendar. Don't get me wrong. I think it's based off the Jewish calendar, but I wanted to throw that in there so I could talk about people saying we're hypocrites because we use a, a Roman calendar, um, a pagan calendar. But you look, like I said, we looked at some of the stuff. Uh, even the Jewish calendar was kind of pagan because it comes from the Babylonian system. It always rubs off on them. That's why God said in the Old Testament that they are to be separate from all these pagans and heathens, all these other people. They're to be separate. Kind of like today as Bible-believing, God-fearing men and women, we're to be separate from this world. They want their Christmas. Let them have it. We're to be separate. We're to have nothing to do with it. All right. All right. Um, but, uh, it's, yeah, I talk about coming Greek to English, so the sixth, sixth month, could it be the Roman calendar? Like I said, we don't know when Jesus was born. I honestly, with, I can throw my theory and my belief in here, but I can't tell you it's 100% truth and fact. We can eliminate December in that time period as Jesus being born. He was nowhere born near in that time period, but I cannot tell you exactly when Jesus was born. Okay. Mm -hmm. But like I said, I talk, I talk, I believe it's talking about the sixth month of the Jewish calendar. But the reason, other reason, it's all my notes that I threw this in there is remember it, it talks about Easter. It talks about the Passover. So, you know, how people fight the Bible when it says Easter and it's not supposed to say Easter, it's supposed to say Passover. Well, the Passover happened and we're now in the days of unleavened bread and then Jesus is being held until after the next year's Passover. See, that didn't make sense. That's them attacking the Word of God. It's Easter. But the whole point is, they were basing it, there was the Roman calendar going on, and then there's the Jewish calendar going on. So, it's going on, both of them are being shown in the Bible. Okay? Because uh, Easter is based off the Roman calendar, not the Jewish calendar. So... Let's, see, let's get back to Luke 1, 28. So let's go through the prophecy. Turn back to Luke 1, 28. Uh, like I said, we're just going to be going through it. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she, had, when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this would be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy wound, and bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. Throne. People don't seem to understand, it's not that someone was just born, it's because there's a king born. There's a difference. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Right. Now, people take these verses, six month, right here, she's told, you conceived. Wait, 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 is that what it said? She conceived? No. Take this verse, that she conceived in the sixth month of the Jewish calendar, Adar, which is around February, March, so the birth would be December in Roman calendar. There are two problems using this passage to prove that. Let's look at the two problems real quick. But one problem kind of gave it away. It doesn't say she conceived. Kind of, I jumped the gun, gave it away. Um, but there's two problems with this. Let's start with problem one. We don't have to go outside the Bible, but let's go outside the Bible a little bit for this part. 30 to 42 weeks is av av what they're saying is average pregnancy. Okay, you know what that is? That's eight months and eight days, roughly, uh, because there's 30 days in a month, all that stuff. It's eight months, maybe I got the math wrong a little bit, but eight months to eight days to nine months and eight days. That's the time period. But what do they like to do? They like to just say it's nine months. Nine months later, oh, Jesus must have been born. Okay, now there's children that are born a little bit before that, they consider it premature birth. There's people that are born after that which is late birth, okay? There's a huge, almost, you could say, two-month gap where people, kids are being born, okay? I understand if you're born too soon, you can have physical problems. If you're born too late, there might be problems. But I know people that have been premature birth that are just fine. Nothing wrong with them. 
right? And so forth. But I had to throw that's one problem. You can't go exactly nine months and say, Jesus was born in December. See, we're going to skip the February part. We already talked about that. It takes a lot of... Um, it takes a lot of blinding yourself and narrowing things down, saying, I'm going to ignore this, I'm going to ignore that, I'm going to and just get this and say, okay, now I see what I want. I see what I want. It's got to be this way. Okay? So that's the first problem when you're trying to go off the six-month mark and say it's nine months later exactly, and that's when Jesus is born. December, that's why we do it. That's what the Catholic Church says, and that's what the Catholic Church pushes, that Jesus was conceived in uh, March, and... He was born around December. That's why we have our Christmas, right? the birth of Jesus Christ. Um, so that's the first problem. Here's the second problem. Read verse 31 again. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shalt call his name Jesus. Right? You name a child after it comes out and it's born. This is future prophecy. She's not with child. She hasn't conceived yet. This is future. He's telling them in the future this is going to happen. So that already takes away that, well, the six months, or maybe it was a few days or something. We'll get to that because all you have to do is keep reading. All right? So we're going to get to that. But she was, with, she was not with child at the time. She was told in the sixth month that in the future she would conceive a child. Thou shalt conceive. That's future tense. Okay? Uh, let's go to verse 34. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come, shall come, future tense, shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee, therefore, for also that holy thing which shall be born of, you, of thee shall be called the Son of God. Future prophecy. And it's telling her how it's going to happen. Let's see. Now, the thing about this is people say, well, What's going on? Uh, Matthew 118, if you want to turn to Matthew 118 real quick. Okay? The reason that she's not pregnant right now is I'm jumping ahead a little bit because we're going to get to where she goes to see um, Elizabeth, uh, John the Baptist's mom, and we're going to get into that. But Matthew chap uh, chapter 1, verse 18, this is talking about um, Joseph. She's espoused to Joseph. It talked about that at the top. She's already espoused to him. Okay? Matthew 118, now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise, when as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Okay. She was found. In other words, her stomach had to be getting big enough that you couldn't hide it anymore. Okay. She was found with Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privily. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take thee unto thee Mary, thy wife, for that which is conceived, that's present tense, is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. I just wanted to keep going because it's amazing. This, they try to say it's talking about the world. His people, he came in to the world for the Jewish people to be their king. Okay, it doesn't say the world, it says his people. Okay. But notice there that it is conceived. I wanted to throw that in there to show that yes, the Bible can use it in a present tense. Right there, it's present tense. She is already conceived. She's with child. But she's saying, see that I know no man, doesn't mean that she's pregnant right here and now. No, it means that she hasn't been married to Joseph yet. It's out in the future. She's not been with any man. And she's not going to be with any man until she gets married to Joseph. They're just espoused. It's out there in the, in the future, future tense. Okay. He's telling her future prophecy that, yeah, sometime between then, 
you're going to conceive okay, before you get married to Joseph. And as we read there, when it came time, he found her with child. So go back to Luke chapter 1, verse 36. Uh, people like, they, they take Luke 1, 34, that we just read there, as to mean she is with child then. They always try to take that, okay, then she's with child, because she's saying, how, how is that possible since I know not a man? It doesn't mean that she was with child right then and there. Mm -hmm. She's saying, I haven't known a man, and I won't know a man until I get married. I'm betrothed. Right? Espoused to Joseph. That's in the future. So Luke 1 36. Go back to Luke 1 36. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she, she hath also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month which with her who was called barren. No, it says also conceived a son. That's present tense. Right? So it contrasts the future tense, you shall conceive, and now it's saying, um, for Elizabeth also conceived a son in her old age, present tense. For with God nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. And Mary rose in those days and went into the hill country with haste into a city of Judea. Okay, it's travel time. Uh, takes time to travel. And entered into the house of Zacharias and saluted Elizabeth. And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. And she spake out with a loud voice and said, Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. Okay. Uh, you ever heard of women being fruitful when they're young, but when you get old? That's, that was the whole thing about Elizabeth. She had a child in her old age. They go past the childbearing er, um, time period in their life. Their womb is no longer fruitful. The fruit of thy womb, she's saying she's young. We'll see this. It's not saying the fruit of thy womb. It is, you know, you're uh, pregnant. Uh, hey, it's not pregnant. It's with child. With child means person. Body, soul, and spirit. Pregnant means it's just a thing. You can kill it if you want to. It's, it's with child. Let's keep reading. And whence is this to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For lo, as soon as the voice of thy salutation sounded in mine ears, the babe leaped in my womb for joy. And blessed is she that believed, for there shall be a performance. Shall be. A performance of, all, of those things which were told from her. Her from the Lord. Now over here it says the mother of my Lord. She's going to be the mother of Jesus Christ. That's future prophecy. Elizabeth, Holy Spirit's in John the Baptist in her stomach and the baby in her stomach. And it's, it's the truth. She believes it. You're going to be the mother of my Lord. Okay? You are the mother of my Lord. But notice what she said there. For there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord shall be. Everything we just read where um, Luke 1, 31 over here. Uh, they like to skip verse 31, one, uh, Luke 1, 31, and they just say, well, that's just talking about he shall be great and shall be called the son of the highest and the Lord God shall be, give unto him the throne of his father David and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom there shall be no end. See, that's all it's talking about. But they twist the scripture. What does it say there? For there shall be a performance of those things, plural, which were told her from the Lord. What about verse 31? And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Jesus. That's part of what was told her. In other words, she's saying, this shall come to pass. It hasn't come to pass yet. Mm -hmm. It's very important that words, remember one of the parts of this ministry is words have meaning. Okay, future tense is what's going on here. Now notice this is after she is told the six months about what will future tense happen to her by the angel Gabriel, which we read in first, uh, Luke 1, verse 31 through 33. Okay, 
She then travels, and back then it takes time to travel. And we'll talk about that a little bit more. I found some interesting things. I was trying to grab it and say, see, it probably took them two weeks to a month or something. And it's like, oh, well, when you do the math and everything and you look at the speeds and stuff, okay, it wouldn't have taken them that long. But it takes days. It's not like we, they had cars to jump in. It took them 30 minutes to get there or an hour. Or like I travel uh, to see family two and a half hours one way, five hours one uh, round trip. It's not like that. It takes a lot longer for them to get places back then than it is for us today. But I want to throw in there, it takes time to get there. To Elizabeth, who in also says shall be. Once again, future tense. Shall, when all this shall come to pass. Those... For, let's see, for there, I want to say it right. For there shall be a performance of those things. Shall be. Future tense. Let me see. I'm trying to make sure I'm not jumping ahead too much. Yes, I am. I'm not supposed to turn the page yet. So back to Luke 1.46. Another part people will grab from here okay, and say, well, what about this? Well, let's read it. And Mary said, my soul doth magnify the Lord and my spirit hath rejoiced in God, my savior. We're going to read to you reading down. For he hath regarded the low estate of his handmaiden for behold, from henceforth, all generations shall call me blessed. Okay. For he that is mighty hath done to me great things, and holy is his name. When it's talking about all generations shall call me blessed, there's another future tense. It's saying shall call me blessed. She's, I don't believe she's pregnant, and the Bible pushes that she's oh, pregnant. Forgive me, Lord. She's not with child. She hasn't conceived yet. It's hard to get certain words out of your vocabulary when you've been brainwashed with them for so long. Um, get, uh, she hasn't conceived yet shall call me blessed future tense verse 50 and his mercy is on them that fear him from generation to generation right. he hath showed strength with his arm he hath scattered the proud in the image imagination of their hearts he hath put down the mighty from their seats and exalted them of low degree he hath filled the hungry with good things and the rich he hath sent empty away he hath holpen his servants Israel in remembrance of his mercy. And he spake to our fathers, to Abraham, and to his seed forever. What is, what's going on here? Well, let's try to instruction righteousness, apply it to us, okay? Great things, let's go back to it. Great things are plural. But remember, it kept saying shall. Shall call me blessed. What do I believe is going on here? Okay, she's that when it said that uh, great things, it's present tense because what she's doing is God telling her this great thing's going to happen. So what she's doing, she's going around saying, "Well, I'm thankful for all this stuff, Lord. Thank you for this. Thank you for that. These people who do this, these people who do that." It's present tense because how many of us do that, brothers and sisters of Christ? You learn that something great, God's going to do something great in your life. And you turn around and you start giving him thanks for everything that you already have in your life. You give him thanks for things that are going on around you as it is. Before that one thing happens. Okay? Whether financially you, got some ex you get some extra money coming in. It hasn't happened yet. But you're like, thank you Lord. And thank you for letting me have this. And thank you for letting me have a truck that works. For having a roof over my head. Clothes on my back. Lord... Uh, thank you for the chicken coop I have, the garden, all this stuff. You know what I'm saying? When we hear sometimes, how many of us do that, brothers and sisters in Christ? We're like, we just start giving God thanks for all kinds of things. Not just the one thing. We start spreading out and saying thank you for all this stuff. That's what I believe is going on there. Okay? So, go back to Luke. Uh, where are we there? Luke 156. I'm looking at my battery. I didn't make sure it was full to begin with. But the batteries on this whole, whole camera are not lasting as long as they used to either. Um, Luke 156, and Mary abode with her about three months. Okay, remember three months. Okay. And returned to her own house. Now, since it was future prophecy in verse 35 and 45, 
And when Mary's talking, what if she did not conceive until after she went back home? She stayed with her for three months and then went back home. That would put Jesus' birth around March to April, which could be more plausible because the shepherds could be in the field at night this time of year. But once again, the Bible is not clear on when she actually conceived nor the length of her um, being with child. Okay. So this cannot be stated as absolute fact, but we know we can eliminate the winter time period. Because I didn't put this in the notes, but the shepherds were out in the field when they were supposed to be in the barn. Okay, That's where Mary and Joseph and baby Jesus, Jesus as a baby was. That's where the shepherds were supposed to be if it was during December. They were out in the fields all night. Someone asked me why. Well, they have their staves. They're protecting them from the wolves. The dogs come out at night. Um, they're there to protect them. Okay. But it was warm enough for them to be out there. It wasn't cold, too cold for them to be out there. So we can eliminate a certain time period. But when you look at it that way, like I said, I can look at it that way and say that's more plausible. But I, and say that's more around the time period where Jesus was born. But I can't say the exact day he was born and say, okay, this day or this week is when it's supposed to be celebrated. Okay? You can't do that. That's the whole point of the study is to let you know that that is a bad argument to grab that six months and say Jesus was born, that we read about, um, and Jesus was born in December. That's what Catholicism does. Okay, that's what the lost world does. And they try to deceive Bible-believing, God-fearing men and women. Because this guy that sent it to me, it sounded good. And I was like, wait a minute. And he's a brother in Christ. And I was like, wait a minute. Maybe I was wrong. And I start doing the study and realize, oh, no, I wasn't wrong. They try to deceive us and confuse us. All we need is the Word of God, brothers and sisters in Christ. God will show us the truth. I started doing the study. I started looking into the Jewish calendar. Started learning some things. So... Um, what if? I can only say what if. Maybe it happened just as she left. It could happen a little bit more longer after she left. Even longer than three months. Okay. But that puts it at that time period. It could be. Okay. Now, Luke 180, jumping down to Luke 180. The child grew and waxed strong in spirit and was in the desert till the days of his showing unto Israel. Talking about John. Okay. So the child was born, John the Baptist, and he waxed and grew strong. Right. Now, this could just be saying future tense also, but it says the child grew, that's present tense. This is before Jesus is born. The child grew and waxed strong in spirit and was in the desert till the day of his showing unto Israel. Now, that is future, present to future. So I understand that that's a time period. But it says, and the child grew and waxed strong in spirit, that's present tense. Right. Did it grow a month, or are they trying to say it grew six months? There's no exact time period here. So once again, I'm not going to sit here and tell you this is the specific time of the year that Jesus was born. I can't do that. I believe God did that for a reason. Right? Uh, then when you proceed to Luke chapter 2, verse 1, get to the next chapter, 2, verse 1, and it came to pass in those days, what are those days? It doesn't tell us the specific days. That there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. Those days is not a very clear. It's not very clear on what the time of the year it, the time of the year is. It doesn't. It's not clear. It doesn't tell us how much time has passed since the visit with Elizabeth. It doesn't tell us. Okay. So we don't know the month that Jesus was born. That's the whole point I'm saying. It could have been February. It could have been March. It could have been April. You know, we don't know the exact month, but you have these wolves in sheep's clothing and you have the lost world, uh, mainly Catholicism, come in and say, we know when Jesus was born. December. Wait a minute. Isn't that the birth of a pagan god, the sun god, Tammuz? Isn't that based off all? Oh, ignore all that. It's the birth of Jesus Christ. They come in and lie to you and try to deceive you. And like I said, with the high places, I'm going to say this again. I'm trying to make sure I don't run out of batteries. So if it stops, I'll have to switch the batteries. Um, bottom line, 
the high places. How did he get the, the people, uh, if you wrote the Babel buildings, high places or church buildings is what I think the video was. And bottom line, they were supposed to sacrifice in the temple. How did they get them to sacrifice in the high places? They offered them food, parties, party times, special times of the year, holidays. They offered them fleshly things to appeal to the flesh to get them to do what they weren't supposed to do. Same thing goes on for the birth of Jesus Christ. They get you to do something you're not supposed to do by appealing to your flesh. Christmas tree, Christmas lights, giving each other gifts. Jesus is the one that gives gifts, not us. On his birthday, I can give anybody a gift any time of the year I want. But when it's supposed to be about Jesus, it's supposed to be about Jesus. Not you and not me. All right. Now, the trip that they had to take, okay, they had to travel 80 to 90 miles. Remember, there's no cars. This is on, uh, Joseph's on foot, um, pulling Mary on a donkey. That's what they say. I didn't really look into that to see if that's actually what the Bible says. It just says they traveled, okay. Okay. I was going to keep reading, but we're going 80, 90 miles, okay? They had to go along the flatlands of the Jordan River, then west over the hills surrounding Jerusalem and on into Bethlehem. It was a fairly grueling trip. Okay? This was Satan's first attempt to kill Jesus. People don't realize that sometimes. This was Jesus, uh, Satan's first attempt to kill Jesus. He made it where Augustus uh, made it where the, whole, the known world is to be taxed, should be taxed, okay? Remember that it came to pass in those days that when a decree from Caesar goes that all the world should be taxed, not will be taxed, should be. Okay. Now donkeys walk about four miles an hour. That's on smooth, good ground. Notice we met flat, there's flat lands, but there's also rivers that they were having to go along and cross and stuff. So four miles an hour, max walking speed. If it was a straight line, and they went 12 hours a day with a very pregnant woman, it, which I know they didn't. It would take two days to get there. So it wasn't going to, like this, I was looking into this, it wasn't going to take weeks and weeks and weeks. It'd take two days to get there. But like I said, it's not a straight line, though. They had to do paths, they had to go along the river, so it was going to be longer. Okay? If they stopped along the way, because Mary needed to take breaks, uh, she's a pregnant woman, very pregnant, it uh, made uh, six hours a day. I just halved it to say six hours a day. It would take four days. But like I said, that doesn't include the trails. So you can't say that traveling like I was trying to, that that traveling time, that was a long time. No, it wasn't as long as you think when you start to do the math and everything. So, but it was, it was grueling. It was, it took, it does take more time to travel. So the whole point of this study, brothers and sisters Christ, is to get it out. You cannot use Luke chapter 1, verse 26, that sixth month when the angel Gabriel came to talk to her as the starting month for the conception of Jesus Christ being conceived. Sorry, being conceived. Conception. Um, you can't use that. Okay, so don't fall in the trap of using that. Okay, that brother in Christ, I hope he learned from that. He helped me learn from that. People can have the wrong thing and tell you the wrong thing thinking that it sounds right, and you have a love of the truth, always study, I'm not your final authority, this is the final authority, God's perfect written word, the King James Bible, and you start doing studies, and he helped me learn, even though he was telling me something that was wrong, he helped me learn, helped me actually do the study, I'm not just going to parrot what other people say, I'm going to do the study and find out if this is truth or not, and that's what I've always pushed for you, brothers and sisters in Christ, it's not about what I say, search the scriptures, like the Bereans, search the scriptures daily to see if those things are so. So, hopefully you enjoyed this really, uh, just a real quick thing on uh, why people are saying the birth of Jesus Christ is in December. I did a study about Christmas and I just said they said it. Well, now I know why they say it. Okay, So, just uh, thank you for all your encouragement, brothers and sisters of Christ. I'm praying for you. Please pray for me. Uh, grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all and my love for you in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you for watching.